hope your day is going well. Today's presentation is concerning cloud computing and capacity management. So now that we've um, done a level set on cloud computing, let's talk about capacity management. One of the terms that um, we like to use here um, in describing capacity management is that it is a business decision support environment. It helps the business contract, um, contract resources. Um, it allows the business to be able to adequately use those resources. It protects the return on investment that the um, organization has. One of the key things as we look at this is that every infrastructure change that you make, whether it's um, through a capacity management model, whether it's just adding additional resources, is a business decision. Someone has made that decision to do that, and then each change has a cost impact associated. Now, that cost impact is not only cost for the hardware that is supported out there, but there's also a human cost and software cost out there. So the bottom line is, we like to have, it's like to say that capacity management equals business decisions. So again, more about what capacity management is. Capacity management is proactive and strategic. It assists in managing the service quality. It assists in managing the cost expenditures. Again, as we said, there's a cost associated with every infrastructure change. Now, you look at it and you think, okay, it's an additional cost. It could be a reduction in cost, but there's some cost associated with it. One of the key points that we've been driving or trying to drive um, really hard as we speak to organizations is that making sure that capacity management aligns the business and the IT. We don't want to be in this silo mentality that we just look at it from an IT standpoint, but make sure that everyone looks at it from a, both a business strategic um, and an IT strategic platform. And along with it, you're going to match the needs with the cost during the growth. Now, that growth may, is going to be different types of things, and we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. So we've talked about cloud computing. We've talked about capacity management. Now let's talk about the cloud capacity management challenges that are out there that everyone is facing. In 2009, as cloud computing was really starting to gain traction, maybe not within organizations, but at least within the uh, analysts talking about it, the capacity management groups or entities out there rated that, um, talked about it, and they said that Capacity management is the top concern for cloud computing. The overlying, how do we handle this? Because a lot of it was unknown. So as people have started to get into it, very quickly they're finding out that they have to have a capacity management process and discipline in place as they decide to move forward. So it's going to be very critical to you. And second is security. That's a lot of, that's a, one of the big concerns of a lot of the organizations is how do I secure this, especially if I'm moving out into a public cloud environment. So you've got to take a look at those two activities. We're going to spend a few minutes on each one of these uh, five topics, but, but we wanted to break it down into these topics for the challenges uh, so you could speak to those again. Looking at the capacity management on demand, do I have too little, too much, just right? When do I need it? How much do I need? Automation and control. So one key um, point of cloud computing is automating the process so that you don't have people actually having to go out and physically provision these processes. But along with cloud computing is you're still going to need to protect your loved ones out there, whether they're in the cloud um, or outside of the cloud and sitting on your legacy environment. So you need to protect those loved ones. I'm going to talk about the scalability, you know, in, up, or out. 
And then we're also going to talk about the old habits or the potential risks that maybe a lot, maybe many people within your organization or organizations uh, still want to keep in play, even though they want to still talk cloud computing. When you're talking about capacity on demand, many times we look at it as, are we, do we have too little capacity out there? Um, has the have the applications been uh, sized? What kind of limits are we putting out there on the, the growth or the movement of applications out to the cloud? Many times it's all for lowering the usage cost. You know, everyone um, with the economy these days, they're looking at what can I do to lower my cost out there. But along with that, you have to look at what we feel is a key, the high impact on business with the capacity on demand. You know, you could have um, areas where you end up with loss of service. Uh, there was a, um, and actually an outage a few months ago of a major um, cloud computing provider that shut a lot of people down with that loss of service. And that fit into SLA breach penalties, you know, making sure that you know, negotiate what those breach penalties are uh, and that you understand what they are. If you have too much, uh, because we fly a lot, I wish there was sometimes there was a plane like that um, in that picture uh, where you're the only one flying on it. But um, one of the statements that Gartner made, uh, have made over the past couple of years is that because of the lack of capacity management initiatives within organizations, most organizations have um, over-provisioned their infrastructure by 100%. So they've got much wasted um, capacity just sitting out there, those resources. Um, and it's not just taking up the the physical hardware, it's heating, it's cooling, it's um, electrical, those types of things out there that are going to fit into this too much over capacity. Uh, looking at it, the unlimited access to resources. Uh, people think that cloud computing is, uh, I'm just going to you know, go out and provision and ask for whatever I want. No, you still need to be able to put these people in a box to, um, to kind of make them think about the resources that they're using. Um, with it, um, a lot of people think that, you know, I've got overcapacity, so my service levels are going to be unaffected. But you, again, as we've been talking about, you know, you're still going to have higher costs out there. So what is the impact? You're going to have poor performance overall within your enterprise. You've got wasted resources. Uh, you can get into the virtual machine um, the virtualization sprawl out there. So that sprawl is moving, uh, people are just allocating resources, defining resources, and just leaving it, and it just sits there. So there's, there's going to be increased management or increased pressure to manage those resources. So you're looking at it out there, how can I make sure that I'm going to do it just right? Which leads me to the, um, the next screen here. How do we get to this, quote, or as close as possible to this just right type of um, scenario. Looking at the applications that you are moving to the cloud or potentially could be using the cloud and doing sizing on them so you understand what the resources are that they use. Make sure that you're using your infrastructure that you've placed out there efficiently. Um, and we'll talk about different ways that you can do that in a few minutes. Acceptable service levels. Many times when people um, within an organization are either acquiring or negotiating um, the cloud computing um, activities out there, they don't or they, they put at the back burner what are the acceptable service levels for their particular application. Um, is it a batch application? Is it an online transaction base? Two different types of scenarios. So you're going to be looking at those, and you're going to need to constantly review and adjust those service levels that you're going to be providing to the end users. And that's all controlled by um, techniques such as shares, limits, reservations, 
those types of things, reserving the resources, putting limits on it, and sharing the resources. And one of the key things with the capacity management is to get it just right is the continuous monitoring and tuning of the environment. Looking at your configuration, looking at your CPU um, memory, looking at your I.O. configuration. Further consolidating virtual machines, having an automated process to consolidate those virtual machines on the different platforms together. Power off unused, uh, in this case it said ESX host, but power off unused maybe AIX LPARs that are sitting out there that are using up resources or um, in the sun environment, those types of things. So that's going to allow you to be more efficient with the resources that you use. The whole point of trying to get it as close to just right um, is to find the, the balance between service and cost. You know, looking at the impact of the increased service or the type of service offerings that you're going to have and the costs associated with it. That's where capacity management really shines and having a good capacity management process helps you quite a bit. 